Well, yesterday I told you the stories. Uh, yesterday I told you the stories about David and breaking bones. I mentioned our good friend, Dr. Benevent, and how many times he rescued our family and all the things that he did for us. I thought I'd tell you how we got to know him. You know, we lived in the same neighborhood, and our house was on the block. You know, it, he goes down one block, and the two houses at the end, and you come back the other side. So our house is facing this way, and his house is facing that way. And my kids, because we were in the park, there was a park there, and all the kids got together. So my children knew his children. And uh, so one night, uh, I guess one night, we were having an all-night Bible study. And um, so I had all the young people over at the house, maybe 25 or 30 young people over at the house. And some of my kids, or the younger kids, were out playing. And all of a sudden, they bust into our our basement area of our house where I had everybody, we were all, you know, having our Bible said, and they said, Dad, Dad, you got to come. The Benaventis house is on fire. And I said, uh, do what? And they said, yeah, it's on fire. Well, the buildings are made out of concrete and bricks and mortar and steel. Not much to burn. But we were having what are called apagones or blackouts. So the electricity be turned off. Hope that doesn't happen in America. Amen. And so with that electricity be turned off and and uh, everybody would have to use candles. I suppose at that very moment, I was using candles. But you get so used to it, you hardly notice what you're doing. And so all of a sudden, they said the house is on fire and they said, you need to come help. So I run and all the young people are following me. And we run over to Dr. Benavente's house. I don't really know them yet, not much. And I, I run into their house, and uh, I, I go upstairs, and the daughter had had a candle lit and had some glue, and the glue caught on fire. She tossed the glue container. Glue spilled everywhere, spreading fire. Her bed was on fire. Smoke was filling up the house. So uh, I started yelling at the guys. We tried it with water. We couldn't do it. So finally I opened the window, and boy, it exploded because it got more oxygen. The fire got bigger. But I yelled at the guys not to quit, not to run. We opened the window, and I threw the uh, the mattress out the window. It landed out in the front yard. And the house had the house had been, I mean, it was smoked, damaged. But we were able to save everything. And we were walking out. Uh, someone said, that big white guy that talks funny, he was, he's the one saved their house. And so it wasn't long until Dr. Benavente came over to the house and he said, hey man, uh, what I need to pay you, uh, how, how can we make things right? I mean, you sure did a lot of, uh, did me a great big favor. And I said, man, I, I, I didn't, you know, I don't want anything from you at all. We're neighbors, we're friends. And I mean, I want to be friends. And, and so uh, we just helped you out. Wasn't long after that, he had a computer. And it was back in the days of Windows and, and uh, I couldn't afford an Apple computer by any stretch back then, but I had become quite the DOS guru. And he couldn't get his computers working, and his daughter told my daughter, you need to tell your dad to get over and fix my dad's computer. So I did. Well, it wasn't long until I had a really messed up ankle. And my ankle, I, I, you know, it, it, my ankle was hurting. And so uh, my kids told Dr. Benavente's kids and told Dr. Benavente, Dad doesn't feel good. And he said, well, I can go over and see him. So Dr. Benavente came over to our house, and he gave me a cortisone shot in the ankle. And he said, you know, you wouldn't need this cortisone shot if you wasn't so fat. If you'd lose weight, your ankles wouldn't have to carry as much weight, and you wouldn't hurt so much. Ha, ha, ha. And then I said, well, what do I owe you? And he said, I don't know. He said, it's going to take me a while to get the bill together. Because, I mean, I've, he said, I made a house visit. I didn't bring a nurse. I did all my own work here. I gave you a shot. I've relieved your pain. I've helped you. And so let me get it together and calculate. Now, he's a real cut up. I mean, just a jokester. They're just wonderful people, just fantastic people. So I looked at him. I said, no problem. I said, while you're doing that, uh, my children are going to help me calculate what we saved you when we saved your house from burning down. And then uh, a computer, my computer expertise in getting your computer running. And then he looked at me, he goes, eh, well, maybe our bills can cancel each other's bills out. And so began a great relationship with Dr. Benavente. I just want you to know 
that if you'll drop your guard and just love people and accept them like they are, they're wonderful. And you can have the most exciting time on the mission field. Drop your guard. Adapt to their culture. Learn to laugh with them. Learn to read them. Don't be just eaten up with um, being the missionary, being different, being the American. You can make a difference. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you like it. Give it a like if you do. Share it with somebody. Thank you all so much for being a part.